Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. The all pervading personality of God. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. Destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of material nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pojita Kaitrovo Tra Paramo ni matsaranam satam. Vedyam vastava matra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. 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 Shivadam tapa Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion. highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold mysteries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataru galitam phalam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasamalayam. Mahur Ahuraska Bhuvi Bhavaka. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although this nectarian juice is already relishable for all including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantak Sto Badrani Vidu Noti Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is it is itself righteous activity 
And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee who constantly engages in hearing, I'm sorry, in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamaloba dayas chaye cheta etarana vidam stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis, chidyante sarvasam saya, chiyante chasikarmani, jista evat manishwari. Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come to the stage of Asamsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Text Number 20. So Ham Nipendra Rahita Purushottamena. Sakya prayena surhida hida yena sunya. Sakya prayena surhida hida yena sunya. Advani urukrama parigraham angarakshan. Advani urukrama parigraham angarakshan. Kopaira sadbir abaleva vernijitosmi. Translation, O Emperor, now I am separated from my friend and dear most well-wisher, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and therefore my heart appears to be void of everything. In his absence, I have been defeated by a number of infidel cowherd men while I was guarding the bodies of all the wives of Krishna. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The important point in this verse is how it was possible that Arjuna could be defeated by a gang of ignoble cowherd men and how such mundane cowherd men could touch the bodies of the wives of Lord Krishna who were under the protection of Arjuna. Srila Vishwanath Chakratari Chakravarti Thakura has justified the contradiction by research in the Vishnu Purana and Brahma Purana. In these Puranas, it is said that once the fair denizens of heaven pleased Astavakra Muni by their service and were blessed by the Muni to have the Supreme Lord as their husband. Astavakra Muni was curved in eight joints of his body and thus he used, he used to move in a pecul peculiar curved manner. The daughters of the demigods could not check their laughter upon seeing the movements of the Muni. And the Muni, being angry at them, cursed them, 
that they would be kidnapped by rogues even if they would get the Lord as their husband. Later on, the girls again satisfied the Muni by their prayers. And the Muni blessed them that they would regain their husband even after being robbed by the rogues. So in order to keep the words of the great Muni, the Lord himself kidnapped his wives from the protection of Arjuna. Otherwise, they would have at once vanished from the scene as soon as they were touched by the rogues. Besides that, some of the gopis who prayed to become wives of the Lord returned their respective positions after the, their desire was fulfilled. After the departure of Lord Krishna, he wanted all his entourage back to Godhead and they were called back under different conditions only. Okay, so this is very interesting. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, unless we hear the explanations given by bona fide Acharyas, and their explanations are always based on bona fide Vedic literatures, we can easily speculate and come up with the opposite understanding of something. Therefore, when there's something we don't understand, we should not jump to any conclusions, but be confident that by waiting patiently and following the rules and regulations and chanting Hare Krishna, the doubt or the confusion will be answered. All answers have already been given to all questions. The question is whether we're going to be patient enough to hear them. Sometimes we're not ready to understand something. So therefore we have to have the confidence that by being patient and following the rules and regulations and chanting properly, uh, all questions will be answered in due time. So here we see how easy it is to misinterpret this pastime because even Arjuna is confused. He says, in his absence, I have been defeated by a number of infidel cowherd men while I was guarding the bodies of all the wives of Krishna. So Arjuna is perplexed, where before he could easily defeat cowherd men, I mean, uh, or rogues, and especially if he was guarding the wives of Krishna. But in this case, he was not able to do it. Now, we do have a similar type of pastime. It's in the history of Jambavan, who is fighting with Lord Krishna. Jambavan was a great devotee of Lord Rama. But after, I think it was like 28 days or one month of fighting, Jambavan was not able to defeat Krishna. And gradually he came to realize that Krishna is his Lord Rama. <laughs> and uh, he surrendered. And as a gesture of his surrender, he offered his daughter, Jambavati, to, to Krishna. So here again is a, is a servant of the Lord who doesn't recognize him. Uh, but, again, but because he can't defeat him, he realizes that nobody else could do that except the Lord himself. So uh, he surrenders. So in this case, Arjuna, he can't understand why previously he had such incredible power and he, he just explained it, how uh, Shiva was not able to, to defeat him and in so many ways uh, he was victorious in the Battle of Kurukshetra and even before that he was victorious in different uh, contests and fights with the Kauravas. So... But now, since the Lord has left, all his power has been taken away. And he's not even able to protect the wives of Krishna from what he thinks are infidel cowherd men. But actually, those infidel cow cowherd men were expansions of Lord Krishna. Uh, Lord Krishna. And he was uh, basically taking back his wives and, and liberating them. So this is very, very interesting and, and we should learn from this that 
Never panic or jump to conclusions when there's something you don't understand. That if you remain patient and have faith in Guru and Krishna, all these questions are going to be answered in due time. Sometimes we're not ready to hear an answer, but by following Krishna consciousness, uh, in proportion to our surrender to Krishna, Krishna reveals more and more knowledge to us. So this is explained also very nicely in, uh, in other places. So it says, anyway, the verse, Yetamam Prabhadyante, Tamsataiva Bajam Yaham, Mamavart Manavart Dante, Manusya Parta Sarva Saha. There is what you call a proportional revelation. Uh, in proportion to our surrender, uh, we, Lord Krishna, reveals himself to us. So in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord confirms that he awards different positions to different living entities according to their proportionate surrender. This proportionate reward by the personality of Godhead to the living entities is not partiality. Therefore, in spite of the living entities always being under the control of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in their different positions, spheres, and species of life, he is never responsible for their different conditions. It is foolish and artificial, therefore, to think oneself equal to the Supreme Lord, and it is still more foolish to think that one has not seen God. Everyone is seeing God according to his capacity. The only difference is that the theist sees God as the Supreme Personality, the most beloved, Krishna, and the atheist sees the absolute truth as ultimate death. <clears throat> so, this understanding that uh, we see according to our surrender to Krishna. That's extremely important. And we can't say that Arjuna wasn't surrendered to Krishna. He was completely surrendered to Krishna. But there's surrender when you're extremely powerful and there's surrender when you're devoid or, or bereft of all power. So when you're extremely powerful, uh, people get f uh, puffed up and they think that they're, they might even be equal to God. And where a person is completely, let's say, defeated and, and devoid of any power, one gets angry and blames God. You know, I've been praying to God and look what happened. I can't even do this or I can't even do that. But a devotee remains completely humble and surrendered to the will of God, even if he has all powers or if he has no powers. And therefore, in all circumstances, we should remain humble and meek in the execution of devotional service and not get puffed up either by great success or get uh, dejected by great defeat. That's the symptom, that's, that's the real quality of a devotee. In all circumstances, the devotee remains patient and humble and completely dependent on the will of, of, of the Lord. So everyone sees God, but depending on the way and how much they surrender to God, if they're completely surrendered, they see him as the supreme personality of Godhead uh, and the most beloved Krishna, and if not surrendered at all, they see him as ultimate death. And this is very interesting that our ability to see the truth depends on how much we're actually surrendered to the will of the Lord. And how do we surrender to the will of the Lord? We should strictly follow the regulative principles and, to, and completely understand that all truth is embodied in the holy holy names of Krishna and the holy maha mantra. Therefore, simply by chanting, taking prasadam, regularly having darshan, 
offering service to the deities, remaining humble and meek in the association of devotees. All these things lead to one's constantly seeing the Lord in all circumstances. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Okay, the daughters of the demigods could not check their laughter upon seeing the movements of the Muni. And the Muni, being angry at them, cursed them that they would be kidnapped by rogues, even if they would get the Lord as their husband. Okay, any question? Yeah, the question is, uh, those are the same queens that... Okay, some were demigods, Pardon? some were demigods, and some were gopis. Yeah, they became queens in the Dwarka. Yeah, that's including such a bomber, Rudmini, all that, Jamalpati. Right. I don't know. I don't know which is which, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many from different backgrounds. You know? Yeah, I mean, some were demigod, demigods, some were, okay, and some were gopis. So Yes, some of them, not all of them. Some yeah, of them were gopis also. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of things we discover right? reading Bhagavatam. <laughs> now, in which in which circumstances Arjuna took that position to look after them? What's that? In which circumstances? Which which circumstance? Yeah, yeah. Arjuna became, you know, took that. Well, when Krishna seemingly left, right, right uh, he, had to do that? he wanted to put them. Well, see, Arjuna is in Hastinapur. He's not in Dwarka, right? Usually, because he's part of the Kurus. So he, he wanted to take them with him back to Hastinapur so he could protect them. Right, because they're widows. Right. He's not going to marry him, but he wants to protect them. And on the way, he, he's he's defeated, and, and they're they're kidnapped, and he's confused. You know, how did this happen? You know, well, just like Jambavan, you know, at first he didn't recognize that Krishna is Lord Rama, mm. but after fighting with him for a month, he realized only Lord Rama would be able to defeat him. So then he accepts Krishna as as, as Lord and surrenders. So, I mean, who could defeat Arjuna? I mean, uh, no, nobody could defeat Arjuna except Krishna himself, right? So, you know, in other words, in every situation, the devotee understands that he's under the protection of the Lord. And, and whether it's success or defeat, it's not that... In success, the Lord he believes, and the devotee believes, and in defeat, he doesn't believe. Mm -hmm. In every situation. So therefore, we have to be patient and not uh, jump to the conclusions based on panic. Exactly. I, I've been chanting my rounds. How come this happened? Right? So many things are going to happen. You know, we have to remain steady. See, Prabhupada said, I'm not surprised by the devotees that have left. Right. I'm surprised at the devotees that have stayed <laughs> because they stayed in spite of all kinds of uh, difficulties. That, so means, that means the person actually has faith. Yeah. So really, the, the uh, devotion is actually, uh, how to say... Um, devotion is always going to be tested. Yeah, exactly. So devotion really actually is well... We experience devotion during adversities, you know. Exactly. 
This is what the, the when, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Right. <laughs> they don't run away. They, they, they stay. And uh, one example is uh, there are temples in India, Krishna temples, that have been abandoned in, in a sense, right? They're not hardly getting any money. Maybe the walls of the temples are crumpled and, and it's exposed maybe to the uh, elements. You know. But the, the Pujari is still doing arti. I mean, I remember years ago when I first went to Mumbai and other places in India, I would see buildings, you know, with one wall missing, right? And, and you look, you can see the apartments, you know, but people are still living there. I don't know if you ever saw anything like that. Yeah. So, but there are temples that, you know, like there's a wall missing or it's crumbling, but still the pujari is doing the arti, you know, and even though it hardly has any money at all, whatever he has, he's, he's offering. So we have to have that determination. Not that, you know, because of negligence, the temple wall falls down. But sometimes there are situations where you don't have any money. You know. But it's no reason to stop the service. Yeah. It's word, this word, the word, the devotion service, apratihata, that's the word. Yeah, it's, it's causeless. We, we uh, should be ready to remain steady in any circumstance. Mm. And they're going to be, we're all going to be tested. And there's going to be horrible situations. It's the material world. If, if it happened to Lord Krishna and Arulad Rama, it's not, it's not going to happen to us. Right? Krishna got uh, blamed. People said, thought he killed uh, Satyajit out of envy because Satyajit had that jewel, right? But he didn't do that. So what did he do? He went and proved that it, he, he didn't do it. He didn't, he didn't get upset and uh, psychologically, uh, you know, disturbed. You know, he, he went and proved he didn't do it. So sometimes, we, you know, we're in, we, we can be blamed for things that we didn't do. And, and everyone's convinced that we did do it, but a devotee who, see, that's the point. If you haven't broken the principles and someone accuses you of something you didn't do, you're not, you're not uh, intimidated because you know what you've done and what you haven't done, right? You know what your motives are, right? So it's, it's, if, if a person has pure motives and is actually following, and let's say, they're not following so strictly. Then they realize, okay, this is happening to me, so I become more serious. So in all situations, if we just uh, rem re remain under the protection of Krishna by remaining humble and meek and determined to follow strictly, it'll straighten out. It'll, it'll, it'll come to a conclusion. It's not a question of victory, it's, uh, but your service will not be interrupted. So the principle is that we should, every step, in every situation, we should surrender to yes. Jesus' will more and more. Yes. His will is to remain humble and meek in the execution of devotional service. So I accept that this is Krishna's will, yeah. so I have to... Yeah, I mean, this could not happen unless Krishna permitted right. it, right? Therefore, he has a plan, and uh, even if I'm suffering right now, uh, it's a message to me to to remain steady and not 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 become panic. You know, people panic. They panic and then they start doing crazy things. You know. Yeah. That's why in the in Shrinagati, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is always using this term, Krishna's will, Lord's will. Yeah. But the meaning surrender means to surrender to Krishna's will. Yeah. That's the whole thing. That's in success thing. or failure. We shouldn't be afraid of failure. See, you know, our journey here is failing, right? So let's see, you know, in the next couple of verses, what his understanding is. So all of us are going to ultimately fail in a sense because we're going to get old, get sick, and die. You know. So, but we saw Prabhupada. He he didn't stop his service right up to the moment of death. He was serving. He didn't say, oh, why is this happening to me? I've done so much. Uh, Krishna shouldn't let this happen. No. no. 
And uh, Bhakti Chiu Maharaj, uh, Prabhupada tells him, you know, he's going to leave his body, and he starts crying, and Prabhupada says, why are you crying? You, you, uh, didn't you learn from me that, you know, uh, birth, old age, disease, and death is inevitable, but we're not, that's only the body, it's not the soul. That's it. Haribo. All glories to Prabhupada. So if we surrender to the Lord in all such circumstances, we're able to see 